Buddy Javier here once again, bringing you another fantastic podcast of episode of Javier in the Air. That's why. Why is it in the air? Because I don't know where we're going to land. We're going to start somewhere, and who knows where we're going to finish. So, uh, for this week's episode, we're going to talk about movies, and we're going to talk about our favorite beer. So, a good one-two combination that is quite uh, spectacular together, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to have a good interview great interview actually with a good buddy of mine named Tim Brown. Uh, Tim has been in in and out of the movie and theater and uh, TV industry uh, for quite some time. Uh, He's going to bring a little bit of knowledge for us, a little bit. We're going to shoot around and talk about his influences, his uh, climb into uh, the business, uh, where it came from, where he goes, and uh, where what he's doing we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, austin movie and theater scene and we're also going to talk a little bit about um favorite movies so i i asked a couple of people got some people on on video some not maybe i'll get more i may, may start doing this to try to get a bigger presence of more people involved in this and not just me sitting here throwing videos at you um, but i asked two questions uh the first one was what is your favorite or two name two of your favorite movies of all time i totally understand that uh people have could have dozens if not hundreds of favorite movies that they could watch again and again and again but i wanted to narrow it down to just two Uh, i gave tim a break here because he was our guest so i allowed him to have three and you'll see that in the interview uh but it's two and then one of one movie that you like and that you watch that people would be surprised that you uh, actually uh, watch and like to watch. And you'd be surprised at some of the answers I got. So um, before I dive right in, so we'll we'll talk uh, about movies. Movies like music are very, can be very personalized, very um, contextual, very uh, influential, can be inspirational. Um, Sometimes it's the music and we, we still, music seems to be uh, something that's woven into our chemistry, into our DNA, and into our lives. Uh, but movies are as well. So that movie can take a particular piece of music and and put a very great uh, storyline behind it. Or they can create a fantastic story, and then you have a music that really punches the thought home of what the director and what the writer were trying to do. Uh, we'll name a lot of movies like that uh, here. Um, so you'll see broad spectrum of different uh, movies, uh, genres, and stuff like that from the people I interviewed and from the people who also gave me some uh, notes here. So uh, if you want to continue this, uh, you can certainly uh, send me at the end of the podcast, send me in, in the comments or in the uh, on my Facebook page. You can send me your two favorite movies of all time, like, hey, how come nobody said this? Or, hey, I want to tell you about mine. Um, and the one movie that people would be surprised that you um, like and and, want, and like to watch. And so just to get a little bit of idea of people around here, uh, what you may or may not like. I think it's interesting to see uh, the general population of the people that follow this podcast and the people that are hopefully will start to follow this podcast. Uh, see what they like, What uh, what's interesting to them. You might be surprised and, and see, you know, and you go, I, don't, I can't believe that that person really liked that movie. Or, wow, that gives me a whole new uh, depth to that person. Um, I had that with uh, Scott uh, from Boutique, by the way, um, who uh, really floored me with one of the answers that he gave is one of his favorite movies of all time. A movie, a little movie that a lot of people have not seen. Uh, I loved it. Uh, I have it, I've watched it, and I've watched it over and over and over again. I can continue to watch it the rest of my life. And I was happily surprised to see that someone out there had the same thought as me. Um, It wasn't one of my faves, and I don't want to give away. I'm going to tell you my faves after everybody else. But uh, So uh, without further ado, let me get to... Um, some of the people that uh, wrote or that I wrote down I didn't get to interview with uh, so the two people that I interviewed uh, and just asked them directly uh, without taking a video and I'm sorry guys I should have I should have just done a video shot right there um, is um, Scott and Jana uh, from the boutique uh, so Jana uh, is a huge Star Wars fan way to go fantastic uh, uh, we like that part 
Uh, but she came out with a couple of different ones. Uh, she came out with um, kind of an interesting uh, mix. So uh, her two favorite movies were um, a kind of a play on The Christmas Carol, the first one, Scrooge, uh, with uh, Bill Murray, and uh, a great ensemble class as well. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, especially around Christmas time, because it's a really great uh, Christmas movie. Her second one uh, was Labyrinth, which, uh, again, uh, quite a surprise, but fantastic movie. Uh, David Bowie, uh, a very young Jennifer Connelly. I think this may have been even her first movie. Uh, great, uh, great music to it. David Bowie sings a couple songs and uh, really just blows away as his role uh, as the king, the Goblin King. Goblin King? I hope I got the Goblin King right, Jenna. I hope it's Goblin. Um, and so, uh, fantastic uh, movie. And then the one movie that she thought um, people would be surprised that she liked is Hold your hats for this one. Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. And that, I, I just started laughing when I heard that because that is a fantastic movie. Again, I would not be, I was very surprised that Jana liked this movie. Uh, but it's fantastic. Uh, it's great. Uh, a little bit of a musical to it. Uh, it's got Dolly Parton in it. It's got Burt Reynolds in it. Uh, it's got a couple of other ones that you'll recognize if you uh, ever if you grew up in the 50s, 60s, or 70s. Uh, you will see quite a few people in there that you did not realize was in that movie. I highly recommend all three of these movies to go out and check them out. Why not? You have time. Uh, you're not going anywhere. There's there's nowhere to go. So uh, check it out and see uh, see for yourself. And if you want to give me a feedback on that, certainly. Uh, if you're surprised or, or any kind of comment you want to give me about those three, uh, certainly be my guest. Uh, I may or may not pass that on to Jana, just depending on what you say. Now for Scott, he also surprised me because he came up with uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, which I still didn't, I still didn't go with, called The Last Starfighter. That's right. So uh, uh, Scott was there uh, joining uh, the, the league to fight against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Uh, so he knows about that movie and he knows what I just said, uh, what I was referencing. So, uh, fantastic. He also went with a, um, Return of the Jedi. So a, a Star Wars movie. Um, he was, uh, again, uh, I, I thought he would be with Star Wars. So I was, I was pretty, I was not overly surprised, but Return of the Jedi is w really one of the better of all the movies that have come out so far, Star Wars. Uh, and if you don't agree, certainly comment and, uh, tell me why you think there's something better than than Return of the Jedi in the top three. I'd love to hear why, and I would argue that to the day, uh, to the day, end of the day, that I think Return of the Jedi is definitely one of the top as far as the Star Wars movies. Now, one of the movie that uh, he liked that he thought people would be surprised at, Urban Cowboy. Again, another fantastic movie by by this couple, uh, Urban Cowboy, John Travolta, um, um, Deborah Winger. Uh, it's got a, um, a really young Scott Glenn in it, uh, fantastic music. It's got um, The Devil Went Down to Georgia by Charlie, uh, the Charlie Daniels Band. Um, and it is just an overall great little uh, cowboy themed uh, movie. It's, it's uh, all based around Gillies, um, which if, again, those in the 60s and 70s and maybe even in the 80s, uh, if you recognize that is that it was a huge bar. Uh, it burned down. I don't think they ever rebuilt it I'm not sure uh, but um, John Travolta really made that extra famous I mean it was already famous inside of, of Texas circles, but outside of Texas made it really fantastic So what I'm going to do now. So again, thanks uh, Jana and Scott for uh, your submissions uh, fantastic um, anybody should see those any of those and all of those in one weekend if you want to invite me over I will sit keep my social distance I may even be outside you can open the window and uh, let me see uh, the movies uh, I would love to watch it we can talk and talk shop about it while we're watching it. it they're just some fantastic movies so thanks again for that for doing that so uh, let me go ahead and drop some of these uh, movies that I have I mean these uh, videos that I have uh, you're gonna see um, one from James, uh, neighbor James, uh, who I interviewed a couple of weeks back. 
uh, his lovely wife Zaida. You're going to hear her favorites and then the one that would, might surprise people. And then you're going to hear from some other friends of mine, uh, Julia, which I had her husband on the show. Uh, he made some uh, musubi for us. Um, and uh, she has a great, uh, great tongue-in-cheek response to my question. And, and then we have uh, Kristen as well. Uh, they both uh, were happy enough and, and thankful enough for me to be able to uh, do these video bits. So we're going to do the video bits. I'm going to come back for a little bit, and then we're going to go on into our interview. So uh, take it away, uh, video bits. All right, James. Two movies, two of your favorite movies. Doesn't have to be the top two. And then one movie that people will be surprised that you uh, like. Okay. My two favorite movies, Starman. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, on the opposite end of that is Pandorum, which is a science fiction movie. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, like, very creepy. Very, uh, yeah, wow. Uh, so those are my two favorites. Nice. And then one that people will be surprised that you like? Uh, that would be, um, oh, was it the, the movie with, uh, uh, Gone with the Wind? Gone with the Wind. Oh. That is surprising. That is surprising. Way yeah. to go, man. That all right, Zyda, the two movies that you, two of your favorite movies, and then the one movie that people will be surprised you like. Two movies that I like are Gone with the Wind. Okay. And Steel Magnolia. Oh, okay. I can see that. And, and the one that I think you'll be surprised with is Pulp Fiction. That is surprising. I am totally surprised that you would like Pulp Fiction. That's I awesome. Tarantino. That's right. That is awesome. Thanks, Zyda. All right, Julia. Two movies, two of your favorite movies of all time. I know there's a lot, but just two of your favorites. Uh, Conjuring and Gladiator, I can watch over and over and over. Again. Okay. Question two. Yes. A movie that you like that people will be surprised that you like. Deep Throat. Oh. All right, Kristen. Two of your favorite movies of all time. Uh, the Original Exorcist and Tombstone by far. By far. Okay. And then question two. A movie that you like that people will be surprised that you like. And, and you can't use Deep Throat because uh, Julie already did that. We'll not use that. It will be, it will be The Greyhound, the documentary that Tom Hanks just did. Okay, about World War in the Pacific, World War II. Maybe. I, just, I know it was a really good one. People All right. <laughs> ah, I told you that one from Julia was going to be a little surprising. Uh, she wanted to have a little fun at the end there. Uh, so uh, thanks for everyone. Thanks, you guys, for... Uh, 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 answering the questions for me. I will try to start doing other survey questions, so I will try to get other people involved with this as well. Um, and if certainly, uh, I'm gonna start giving out the theme like Tuesday, and then anybody that uh, wants to answer my survey questions, I will post them on Facebook as well, uh, as well as YouTube, and you can certainly just uh, send me your thoughts and comments and answers to them and that sort of thing. So, uh, fantastic. I was really uh, uh, surprised again by uh, the answer that James gave, um, specifically um, uh, Pandorum and Starman. I mean, those are both uh, great movies, and uh, I didn't know he had, he knew those, and those were really good ones. And then Gone with the Wind, and um, Zyda made that her favorite, so that was interesting. And then Pulp Fiction, Zyda, that was, uh, that really was, I think we've talked about it before years ago, but it still uh, surprises me when you tell, when you tell me that. Uh, I know you like uh, Quentin Tarantino, great director, um, and it, it's really a good movie. So um, again, everybody commented and gave some great answers, and if I were you, I would recommend watching all of them. Uh, the Greyhound, our Greyhound that uh, Kristen was mentioning, uh, that is only on Apple TV right now, so I don't know if they're going to ever release that anywhere else. It just came out like maybe a month ago, uh, starring Tom Hanks. And it is, uh, it, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen the previews, and the previews of it make it look really fantastic. So you're, if you're into war pieces and you're into uh, military strategy pieces, uh, this is the one that you, one of the ones that you should definitely watch. So, all right, so now we're going to go, uh, we're going to go right over to uh, Tim and we're going to switch over to uh, interview Hav and interview Hav. Uh, go ahead and uh, take it away. Go. Hey, thanks podcast Javier. Uh, hey everybody, this is interview Javier and uh, today I have 
uh, and Mr. Tim Brown with me. Uh, Tim and I have worked together before in the past, and he has a really good uh, background that we're going to talk about today in regards to our theme, uh, movies. Uh, so Tim, why don't you give us a, a little background about yourself, and then uh, right off the bat, just kind of tell us how you got into uh, the movies and, and what that, you know, all that whole process for you going. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is awesome, first of all. Thanks for having me on. Sure, sure. Um, and I just realized that I have my daughter's name as the hyphen next to mine. So in case everyone's like, why is this at Harper? <laughs> I, the, the last Zoom meeting I had was uh, her pre uh, kindergarten orientation. So oh, that, nice, nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'm, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't even know where to start. A little bit of background about me. I'm you know, from Chicago originally and uh, living here in Austin, been here for about 13 years. I have two daughters, uh, married to a beautiful woman, Christy, uh, who's off in the other room, uh, uh, relaxing here on Sunday fun day. But uh, yeah, then, you know, how I kind of got into in the movies and acting was uh, I was a lifelong, um, I guess, basketball player. And I went to a small college in Western Illinois and started playing ball there. My sophomore year, I got into a big fight with my coach and uh, and actually quit the team and um, it was a blessing to the skies because I didn't know I had at the time uh, I needed to take an elective and my uh, I was they were running through my uh, counselor advisor at college was like you know you could take music I was like I have no music he's like you could do I was like I have no art and he's like well what about this acting class and I was like that sounds like it should maybe be fun and so uh, I got in and, and just didn't really even think about what I was doing. I was having so much fun in there. And then the director kind of came up and he's like, Hey, we're doing a play. You should uh, audition for it. And I was like, sure, let's do it. Uh, auditioned for it. And I got started in it and absolutely just fell in love with it and um, continued to do it. And then, uh, you know, graduated, went to Chicago and Chicago is a great place to study acting. And so I was taking classes down at second city and, things like that. And then I had uh, a good buddy of mine who, you know, Javi, John Melios yep, yep. Uh, was moving to, uh, uh, was moving to um, Oakland. And so I drove out to California with him and uh, basically I had never been out there before and realized that I, I, you know, Hey, you know, I'm young enough. I got nothing really going on. Let's just go out there and, and give it a shot. So I uh, went out to Los Angeles and, and, um, and just, you know, kind of tried to soak it all in and, and uh, really learn the ropes um, and was out there for about five years. And I, I um, you know, it's, it's a grind out there. It's, it's especially when you, you know, you're, you're, you're young and you just don't know anything. And so you're right. You gotta, you gotta be careful um, because there's so many distractions out there and um, you can kind of fall into those little pitfalls, if you will, um, pretty quickly. But, uh, but, you know, I took a little bit, to get going, I got an agent, started doing commercials. Um, now, have and, you done any commercials that we may have uh, actually seen? Yeah, uh, actually quite a few, but uh, the big, the one, in, none of them obviously recently, but the biggest one was a, a 2005 Honda CRV commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we shot it in uh, Big Sur. We were there for like four days. It was great. Um, and, uh, but it, I was the one again, driving the CRV and unloading all the equipment, playing volleyball. It was right. It, yeah. Right, cool. that, all right. Cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's funny. That was one. Uh, and, and that's the other thing that's so funny about it is like, you just, you, you know, uh, you never know, uh, you know, when it's going to come or how it's going to happen, but you get a call from your agent she tells you that you got a, a, a you know, there's a, a Honda commercial they need you to go audition for that one in particular, I was painting a house in the valley all day that day uh, during the day. And it was like 105. I got done. I was supposed to have beach clothes on. I showed up. I was covered in paint. Didn't really care. You know, and, and uh, uh, I remember the instructions were to, uh, you know, act like you would if you were on a beach with people. And all these guys got up and were trying to be macho and pretended to throw the football around. And I found the cutest girl in the room and just sat there and flirted. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Cause I didn't feel like really moving around. So uh, anyways, short two days later, I got a call back from the agent that said you booked it. So um, anyway, and that was uh, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty good one for sure. Nice. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I realized uh, I got cast doing a, a couple Shakespeare shows. Um, and we were traveling up and down the coast and it was this great experience. And 
I was still pretty young. And so I realized that maybe I should head back to Chicago and do a little and just, you know, uh, hone in on the craft a little bit. And mm -hmm. um, so I headed back to Chicago. My agent told me I was an idiot because uh, I was just starting to book uh, some right. stuff, which, you know, um, was, you know, in hindsight was probably, probably she was right. But uh, anyways, headed back home and, and um, got started doing shows, started doing plays. Uh, and then um was in a couple uh, short films in Chicago. And then shortly after that, I headed back down to Austin to help some buddies open up a restaurant. Right. With the of heading back to Los Angeles. And before I knew it, I was doing plays here and, um, you know, uh, you know, at least one a year and then had shot a couple short films here. And, mm. and so, uh, yeah, I, that's, you know, kind of the background on, on and where I'm at with movies and, and acting. Nice, nice. I like that. That's a good. That's a that's a great background. A smattering of just about everything. What were some of the? Because uh, uh, I know I'm curious. What were some of the Shakespearean plays that you were doing? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did uh, the the one in La, the one in Los Angeles was unbelievable. It was it was first company called Shakespeare by the Sea, and we would flip flop Romeo and Juliet and the Twelfth Night, and we would do them uh, every other night, and we would travel up and down um, the beach cities from like. I think as far down as maybe Laguna all the way up to like, I want to say Santa Barbara. Um, but, and then and we would just do these and these like parks. A lot of times they were by the beach and it was right. you know, crowds of like, it was Shakespeare in the park. It was, yeah, you know, yeah. so it was really cool. Um, and then here, uh, when I got here, I ended up doing uh, um, uh, Hamlet, uh, which was really cool. So. And what, what character were you in Hamlet? I was I was the bad guy. I was Uncle Claudius. So. Oh man! All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, you know they say it can, it can stretch someone. You know, playing the bad characters more so than the good characters sometimes. Yeah. Um, they, then I realized I I don't know if we're allowed to swear in here, but then I realized I'm like I kind of started looking back. And I'm like I'm I think I'm being typecast as the asshole. <laughs> So <laughs> I can't realize I was getting these these parts where I was either the bad guy or I was an alcoholic or I was you know. Yeah. So, um, and then I, the same theater company here, the, I don't know if I'm trying to just see if I can't knock out every role in Romeo and Juliet, but I ended up playing Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet, uh, here as well. So, you know, this, nice. this guy pattern was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hey, you know, if it, uh, if you can get the parts then that's fantastic. So, yeah. uh, what was the, um, what was the last one? We talked a little bit about it before I started taping. What was the last, uh, short film that you did? Cause I know. That was a good son. It, yeah, it was, it was the, the last one was a good son. It was a uh, short film by um, Suzanne Weiner, who's a, uh, she's here in Austin. Uh, she's from New York. She's an unbelievable, she does it all. She's a producer, writer. Um, she's, this was her first directorial debut and um, mm -hmm. it was cool because I'd done something with her before um, uh, nice. a local movie here with her before. And so she had reached out. And that one was cool because I actually had to go through the audition process. I had to submit a tape and I had to actually, I was up against somebody in Los Angeles. I never, and, and so the stuff got submitted out to LA for the role. And, um, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. It was, so what would you say is the best, um, that you feel is the best as far as acting goes? Is it being in a movie? Is it being in a commercial? Is it being, uh, in a play? Is it, um, you know, what, what, what do you feel personally is the best thing that you like to do of those? I, you know, it, it, I'll, I, I ain't going to say no to a movie or commercial, especially if they're paying, but <laughs> no, right, that's, right, uh, right. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, it, it it's tough because I, I think there's things that I like about both. I mean, um, doing movies and, and doing film, they're, they're completely different, but I love doing, I love doing theater. I love the, 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 the rush of coming on the stage with an audience and, right. you know, and your audiences are different every night and something that worked the night before might not work, you know, and, and it's just like the ensemble of the cast. And, um, you know, there's, you put so much into like, uh, we, I talk about it all the time when we're on, you know, when we're, um, when I'm doing a show with people, it's like, there's, it's like, you know, you're, you, you spend all this time, first of all, building on a personal level, building a character and getting it like exactly how you want, you put so much into it. And then you're as the cast, you 
uh, put all this effort into like, you know, just putting the show and giving it life and bringing it to stage and the, right. you know, and especially if you've got a great director, which uh, uh, this guy, Jeff Hinkle here in town for city theater is an amazing director um, and, and been lucky to work for him a bunch of times, but he, uh, he, and, and then when you're done, you know, you put all like blood, sweat and tears into this performance and then right. all you're done, it's done. Like, it's not like, you know, in three months, let's get the band back together and it's just done. It's gone. Yeah. So it's, I think there's just something, uh, you know, you can't, and like, that's what, like the difference with the film is like, you, you know, Hey, if I want to go revisit it, I can just pop it on tape and take a look at it and watch, mm-hmm. you know, but when, when the shows are done, they're done. And, and it's, it's, uh, just overall, it's an incredible feeling. Nice. Cool. Well, I have, uh, two more questions before the final question. So, uh, one of them is, is like, um, for what, because of what's going on now, because of the virus and everything, uh, what have you seen, or what have you seen that has changed a little bit as far as trying to either get a role or, or like you were talking about, like uh, Mr. Hinkle trying to, is he trying to still do a play? I mean, what's going on? I know, I know a lot of people in that uh, area right now are hurting, but are they trying to get anything going right now uh, during this time? You know, I gotta be honest, I, I haven't even really focused on it. I've, I've reached out to um, a couple of, of friends to see if, if they're, what they have going on or, or how they're, you know, approaching it, you know, especially here in Austin, I just don't, you know, um, I, I, I had, you know, I know a lot of theater, I think they're, they're doing, they're trying to do fun stuff virtually just to keep it alive, sure. but, uh, you know, not to take us too far off track here, but what kills me is, is that, you know, the Austin theater scene was taking a hit anyways with theaters that, you know, these, these great community theaters that were just closing because um, they, they, you know, were struggling with rents or, you know, keeping locations with the way the city's growing. And so it's yeah. been, been kind of sad um, in a lot of ways uh, to see some of these houses go. So I know COVID has really, uh, it hasn't, hasn't done any favors for them. So, right. um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just, it's, it's just, it's stuff, everything's just slowed down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. And, you know, they usually are uh, from, you know, the little bit I know about it is that they're usually on a few spring budget anyway, a lot of these small theaters. Yeah. So when it, you know push comes to shove and you're not able to get anything out there for even a month, I mean it's such a it's just such a hit like you're talking about uh, that they it, it's hard for them to recover. And then when you have this, all right, everything's opening back up, and then all right, everything shut back down again, uh, makes it even worse in some cases. So uh, yeah. you know, uh, so I'll see if uh, I'll see if we have anything else out there, uh, and I'll post hey. the links to the some theaters if you want me to post some links to theaters as well i'll do that as well and see what they're doing yeah um, i'll do a definitely, little de- yeah def- uh, definitely the city theater um yeah. you know i know they they yeah that's a whole nother podcast for you uh, oh yeah yeah we we can go and then that's what i the only thing i'm trying to do too is build up on the people i interview like yourself and others and then uh see what else they're passionate and want to talk about and then i'm going to come back and start uh talking about that I know I have Chris already wanting to talk about uh, movies as well, but I'll get him at another time. And uh, he, you know, anything he wants to talk about military, he's ready to go. Uh, Eric, yeah, he, he's ready to go. So he's Chris has Chris has some acting chops. He's he's yeah. actually he took the stage quite a bit in uh, San Antonio. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, and he, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell this, so he might get I might get in trouble with this. But he's also a writer, so he's. Uh, oh. You know, and he's, you know, that's he's kinda, it. I, yeah. I've had some writers and I had some other people on here. And so we'll be circling back, especially for you, because I'm sure you got a bunch of other stories. One more question before we close, before my closing question. Um, someone who's just trying to get going right now. I know it's weird because of the virus and everything, but um, what would you say some of the areas of focus would probably be for them to look at? Not just I know, you know, sometimes going up to bigger areas and finding an agent, but just something that they could personally focus on. Uh, to help them, you know, build their craft. What would you, what would you say to them? Honestly, it's that word right there is focus is that's what I always tell everybody is that, and it's kind of what I even alluded to when you asked me that very first question or when I was telling the background is that there are, um, there are so many distractions out there just in the world alone. And that, you know, I can remember when I first started that people would, you know, one of the things that they would say, you know, is that, you know, hey, watching a movie isn't studying your craft, you know what I mean? Like, so don't, don't make that as an excuse. Like you, you have to get out there and, you know, get involved in workshops. Uh, if they're online right now, get involved in them online, get yourself okay. into a new show, 
So um, get out there and audition and just know that you're going to be, that, that you will be told no a thousand times. Um, right. But just start and start, you know, and I had, you know, one of the things that I remember a, a casting director told me in, um, in, in, L, in LA one time was, uh, was actually, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt to go back to a smaller market, get your, build your craft and then, and then come out. I was so green when I went out, but at the right. same time I was passionate and I really, I just didn't know what I didn't know. And so, right. um, you know, keep those blinders on, stay focused on what you want. If, you know, if, if you love to be in films, if you love to be on stage, mm -hmm. stay focused on it and don't, you know, the parties are the parties. People are going to be, you know, Hey, let's go. Hey, let's do this. Oh, you don't need to work on your lines. You don't need to, you know, oh, skip that acting class today. Like, come on, we're right. going to go to the, like, just, just no, like if you if you're passionate about it, stay in that lane and stay focused on it. Yeah, excellent. Well, that's great. All right, so the questions I'm asking uh, uh, everyone, uh, and I have some uh, snippets that I'll be posting. Uh, two of your favorite movies of all time, and then one movie that people would be surprised that you like to watch. This is such a hard question. I know, I know. Everybody's been telling the same thing. They're like, I can't do it. Yeah, you can just pick two, and then the one that. Uh, the one at the end, that's the one that they usually know which one they can pick right away. So what do you got? The, all right. So I, I have kind of been thinking about it in the back of my head. I'm going to definitely go the first two killing me here. It's because I've got to cut one out. I've got to cut three out. <laughs> and so it, it's, I'm going to go with. Uh, definitely. You know I tell you what, I tell you what, for you, I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three right. of your favorite ones. So you don't have to cut out the third one. All right, go ahead. All right. So, uh, then fine. It, it's it's going to be true romance. Oh, uh, nice. True romance nice. is definitely no matter what. That's in. That's definitely definitely in. Okay, fact, true romance. Uh, it's a wonderful life, and and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it has been so many classics. Everybody has at least one classic in there. Okay, and yeah. then for the one that people will be surprised you like. I don't know if this is a surprise, but I'm going to go with Casablanca. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Really great movie. Uh, I mean, it's, it, I think it's one of the more perfect ones. It just has everything in there that you want to watch in a movie. Uh, I know maybe not these days, but I certainly like it. It's definitely a good one. Oh, that's awesome. So that's It blows me away when people like they, and I just think it's funny that people haven't seen it. And I'm like, how have you not seen Casablanca? It's, it, Dude, there's so many movies out there that people hit and you know they don't and maybe they don't even experience it like now the people that are younger than us uh you know in their 30s and in, even in their 20s uh they don't get exposed to it. it's just like some of the music that chris and i were talking about if you don't get exposed to it you're never going to know there's so much stuff going out there top quality low quality really low quality movies uh yeah. that, that they don't have time so if someone doesn't stop and tell them hey Go and listen to, or go and watch Casablanca, uh, or go and listen to uh, anything by ACDC. You know, anything like those type of, uh, you know, even, you know, you start going further back and you get Janis Joplin and you start going to, uh, you know, Once Upon a Time in the West and you start going into some of those movies that are just, they're just fantastic. But again, if the younger people and then their parents don't know, uh, it makes it tough. But Casablanca is one that should always be watched by everyone really at least at least once and even if you don't like it watch it and then talk to people about why you didn't like it and i guarantee you they're going to be like really well have you watched this movie and then that's going to lead to other great classics as well so i think that's a good pick oh uh, when he tells them to play play la frase and they get up <laughs> so good yeah it is good well hey i'll tell you what hi Thanks no problem, man. I'll do this anytime. I can sit here, especially you get me starting to talk movies, and, and I love hearing about you know. Uh, uh, I love going back and forth on this. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna definitely. Uh, I'm gonna swing back around again. I might even get you and Chris on the call, and so that yeah. we can talk about movies. Uh, maybe here in a couple of weeks, we'll try to find some uh, something themed. Um, I don't know. We'll talk about it and see if we can find a theme that us three can then talk about. Maybe even bring in some other guests as well and just see. Uh, but it was great talking to you. I appreciate the time. And uh, everybody, this is Tim Brown again. So I'm going to post some links for Tim uh, after the podcast. And uh, please go to him and check him out. And uh, we'll talk to you again, Tim. Uh, thanks a lot. Definitely. Thanks, Javi. You bet. Thanks. 
Hey everybody, so uh, not only am I going to do the beer review real quick, and uh, thanks interview Hav, and uh, thanks again Tim for uh, being there in the interview. Uh, you did a fantastic job, I appreciate it, and I like those movies that he did. So, um, out at the boutique, they had a little uh, mystery box that you can buy, so I, I told Scott and Jana that I would open this up on TV here on the podcast so here is the uh, this is their one year anniversary so uh, thank you to uh, Scott and Jenna uh, from Scott and Jenna um, I got a nice little sticker as well um, I hope everybody can see that oh I have a new glass that I'll be using now for the uh, beer reviews thanks again Scott and Jenna um, I have some, quite a few, actually I got a couple of different glasses in here, fantastic, and a bunch of different beers, so I, I won't be, go through all of them, but here's a uh, face change by Lagunitas, that's fantastic, so I will start showing these, I got a beer opener, oh here's a nice one, Circle, Circle, an alibi, this is a blonde, blonde ale, uh, wow, that looks really good. Wow, so just a fantastic amount of beers in here. Let me see what this one is. Oh, Speedway Stout. I've definitely reviewed this before, and it is high in the uh, AB, ABV, and it is fantastic in the taste. I will be drinking some of that. So thanks again, Scott and Jana. This is a fantastic box. And um, we'll be, uh, so let me uh, slide over to the review. And then I'm going to have a quick review at the end, and then we're going to wrap everything up. So thanks again, guys. Uh, bringing you another beer review. This one is from Second Shift Brewing and Untitled Art. Um, actually, I'm inside my garage, too, so since it's raining. Uh, this is a New Zealand Pilsner. Get up close there. And it's 5% ABV. So let's check it out. Here is the uh, the beer itself. Beautiful looking color. <sighs> That's nice. Very good finish to it. Very um, not over the top or anything. Smooth. Has a good aftertaste, and uh, I think it go well. It's kind of like a light uh, beer to, to work with. So um, I'm gonna give it a six thumbs up for this pilsner. Thanks, and we'll see you again tomorrow. And we're back. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up by uh, having a final beer. Uh, speaking of Alesmith, we, uh, you saw that Speedway Stout. Uh, this is their uh, juice stand, and it's a hazy IPA. And um, again, um, having a beer here, talking about movies, uh, I think this was uh, one of the best... Um, combinations that I've had as far as uh, podcasts go. Uh, all of them have been really great. I appreciate everyone who has uh, partook, partaken, I'm not sure which way to go with that, um, by participating in it. I appreciate everybody who's been uh, watching them. Please pass these on to your friends and family. Um, I'm doing this just for a little bit of uh, fun and joy in my life. Gives me something to do on the weekends uh, besides just working on my house. Uh, and I think I'm bringing some uh, great information and, and great opportunity for people to uh, talk about things that they're passionate about. So I'm always looking for more things. I'll tell you what the theme is on Tuesday, but if you're, if you're passionate about something and you want to talk about it and you want to uh, push a book, uh, I'm not getting paid for this, but I, I will definitely uh, enjoy pushing that book for you, a uh, movie, anything you've done. Uh, any of any sort at all so just certainly just reach out to me and do it um, so here is uh, the juice stand uh, you see it's a really I don't know if you can see it you probably can't see it but it's really hazy let me get you that 3d effect really hazy you can kind of see uh, the bubbles moving through there and it looks like a thick soupy type of thing which is a good sign of a hazy IPA 
good smell, almost like a, a, a fruit smell, like a grapefruit or an orange smell, which doesn't have any fruit in it as far as I know, but that's just what you get out of it. Or maybe it does. It is called juice stand. Uh, let me see here. Uh, no, it's probably coming from, well, uh, intense notes of tangerine, blueberry, and tropical fruit. That doesn't mean it's in there. It's just that's the intense notes that you get from it, the aroma that you have when you first uh, smell the beer, get its aroma, and then drink it. Really good. Not much of a fruit taste in there, but it's really good and tasty. Um, I can tell it's really smooth on the front end. Um, very tasty on the way down. Uh, not much of an after on the back end. Really good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this one eight thumbs up. Um, so definitely uh, check it out. Uh, go out there, talk to Scott and Jana. You can talk to them about movies. Um, I know they used to put movies up there on the th uh, up on the screen uh, every now and then. Um, ask them for the uh, juice stand. Oh, by the way, this is a um, 6.7 ABV, so uh, not too shabby, pretty good. Uh, heading up that way, and so that's pretty good. Um, so talk to them about movies, ask for some juice stand, uh, see if they have any of those boxes left. If not, certainly just peruse the aisles and go through there and see what, what you may, um, excuse me, may be interested in. Uh, for me, that's a sign of good beer. Um, so uh, check them out. Uh, check out your local um, uh, mom-and-pop stores. Um, try to uh, purchase uh, local if you can, uh, whether it be uh, restaurants or um, gas stations or groceries or anything like that. If you can buy local, uh, source local, definitely uh, do it. Help them out. And um, talking to Tim, uh, I'm going to put a couple of links on the end uh, if you want to check them out, specifically uh, City Theater. And then maybe drop, uh, see if I can find uh, Tim's IMDb um, listing. And so uh, thanks again for everyone uh, who participated. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the next podcast. And uh, until then, I'll talk to everybody else. I mean, everybody else have a good week, and I'll see you again next week.